Hello there everybody, this is Amy from Amy's Handmade Gifts and today I'm going to do my first tutorial. This is my first time ever doing it so I'm not going to promise about anything and it's done using the built-in laptop camera so everything is going to be mirror image but I at least want to give you an idea of what I'm working on. Right now I'm working on a customer's order and they want the state flag of Texas. Again, this is mirror image, forgive me. It's <laughs> and they want it done as a bookmark. So what I'm going to do is show you how I start doing the basic pattern for this. Now what I did was I went on to Google Images and I looked for Texas State Flag and I printed out uh, I think it's a three and a half by five or f I think that's the size image. Then what I do is I go to printfreegraphpaper.com and I print it out one um, two two millimeter graph paper. And on there I mapped out a shape. I'm going to make it 35 beads across and then 79 beads long. And the only part I'm not I'm a little concerned about is the star. That's a little bit hard to get. But this is the general shape. It's going to turn out to be about two-thirds of this size, so hopefully it's going to be long enough to be a bookmark. And I went off previous examples that I did to figure out the length and all that. I'm not going to get too detailed in all that. Anyhow, I'll just show you how I start on one of these. I usually start, I, I go from the sides, I take the shortest side. So this one's 35 by 79, so instead of taking the 79 and going up, I take the 35, and I'm going to work from the bottom up. And I'm going to add the Texas, she wants it to say Texas, in the with a hangy thing, so I'm going to do that last. So I'm just going to show you some of the rudimentary steps that I do. So first of all, what I do is I take... This is going to be a little awkward doing it this way, but we'll try. Okay, what I start with is fireline thread. Again, pardon the mirror image. I don't know how to fix that, but... Fireline thread. I use crystal extra fine four pound size B. And there's 125 yards of it. Find it at Hobby Lobby. Or what I do is I go on Amazon. I find the cheapest one and I order it. Um, I am considering in the future going to actual fishing line that has a very sturdy because this one if you pull it hard enough it will snap and the bees will go everywhere. It takes quite a bit. This is very sturdy thread. But if a kid was to get a hold of it and go, it would. So what I want to do eventually is what they did. There's one called Wildfire as well. And what they do is they modify. There's an actual fishing line called Fire Line. I don't know who makes it or anything about fishing line. But I know that the craft companies, they basically take the fishing line and make a... Uh, I know this is very hard to see. Make a craft version of it. So, what I normally do for this, I don't measure, measure it. What I do for my first length, this is probably going to take five lengths of, they're about five feet, I think. I don't know. What I do is I take my spool, I hold it in the center, and I pull, I unravel all the way to my, all the way as far as it'll go, and then a little bit more. And I call that, I, I'm not going to, this one has been pre-ordered, so normally what I do is I measure down, I keep a track of oh, how many lengths of thread I use, and how many beads and all that. I'm not going to do this this time, because it's been prepaid, so. Okay, so I'm going to cut 
that length off using my sharp scissors. You have to have real sharp scissors for this stuff, otherwise it just gums it up. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to condition the thread to make it more durable. And I ha I found in the craft stores you could find beeswax that goes in this. This is really cool because it's a beeswax and then you stick it in this little thing. Let's see if I can find the little thing. It has grooves in it that you can run the thread through. They have other types of things. They have uh, thread magic and I, I'm just going to use this bee beeswax. So I'm going to take this. Now you can't really see this while I'm doing it. But I'm going to put it through one of the hole, holes on here. And I'm just going to pull that through so it goes up against the wax and gets a coating of wax. There. Then what I usually do is... I either make a knot or I do a stop bead or both. I'm going for this project, I'm going to make a knot. So what I'm going to do is just make a small knot on the end of it. And I that's too tiny. So what I do is I do it about four times. I try to get it. In, I try to make a real big knot, basically. I don't know if I can get it. Yep. You want to try to get the knot in the same location. Sometimes it works out really good. Sometimes not so good. I'm going to try to do it four times in a row to get It in the same location so it makes one big there's three it still probably won't be a big enough knot so I'll probably have to go around to stop beat which I'll explain in a little bit four there and I get about like that so you can see it then I'm going to cut right by the knot So then you have, okay, next I'm going to thread my needle. I use a number 12 beading needle. I get them in these pebble things. Um, they have different ones. This is for 12s. They're really cool. They have different sizes, different lengths. I'm using a 12 because it's this these are skinny. These work the best for me. I got, I've tried all sorts of different... There's different types of beading needles. This is the kind that works best for me. You can use whatever type works for you. Okay. And this is a really, really tiny... These are really flexible, long, skinny, very sharp, teeny, teeny eye. You can barely see it. Let's see if I can get this threaded. Because sometimes it gives me problems. I got the first try. What do you know? Okay, so pull that through a little bit. All right, so there we go. We threaded the needle without much ado. All right, now this is the part that gets interesting. And that is starting. It's always the hardest to start one of these. What I'm going to do. I have a little beading board. I have a mini beading board that I'm going to use. It's really dirty, so pardon me. I have mini. I have three sizes bead design board. I have my big, huge one that I got from my beading class. I got this medium size one. And I have a teeny, teeny, tiny one that I use for when I'm at the market. And right now it is at the market. It's not here. It's really teeny tiny. It's cute. I'll show you sometime. I use that only at the market for repair work. Okay, for this I use three Delica. The customer specifically requested this blue, this red, which they're kind of they're shiny but not too shiny. And then this, I had to special order this one. I got these from Wild Beads. This I had to special order, and I hope that's gonna be enough. If not, I'm gonna have to special order some more. These just came today, so I can get started. 
and these cost $5.75 a tube at Wild Beads and this was like I think three dollars something like that at Aura Crystals which has a lot of these but it's a lesser quantity hopefully I have enough so I wish I had a better camera to show you this but what I'm going to do is start by I know you can't see all of this, so I'm just going to show you the start of it. I'm going to pour a little bit of the colors I'm going to be using. I'm going to start with the red and the white color. So I'm going to pour those, opening it really carefully. Pour a little bit, just a little bit into my bead tray. And my cat wants in, and I'm going to have to ignore her for right now because she was already in here once. She gets once a day, and that's it. So what I'm doing, I know you can't see this, I'm pouring a little, just a little bit of the white and the red into my beading tray so I can get to the beads. This one's a little bit harder since it's a, oh dear, okay. I'm just going to get this started and show you and then shut off the camera because this is really awkward to do this way. Okay. Now, I can't obviously show you because I don't have a... Okay. So I have poured a little bit of red and a little bit of white in my tray. Okay, now I'm going to be working... Let me get this out. From the bottom up. And what I do is, as I go from row to row, I keep track of where I am. I make, um, as I go from each row to row, I keep track of where I am by I take a pen or a pencil and I like mark down, okay, I'm on the first row, so I'm going to make mark the first row that I'm working on. I'm just going to draw over the first line of the grid and that just helps me keep track this is just my system of keeping track of where I'm at while I talk around a needle in my mouth okay so again I know you can't see this but I'm drawing a line one one okay Now, I'm going to start, okay, uh, this is mirror image, so I'm going to start on the, this is red and this is white, the way I should just flip it, it's going to look like this. So, I'm going to start on the red, and on this design, I'm going to count just how many beads I need, and I'm going to thread them on my needle. So, for the red, I'm going to need... One, two, 17. I think I have 17 and 18 here. Seventeen. Okay. So I'm gonna thread seventeen of these red beads on my needle. And the first one, when I do the first one. I'm going to pull it all the way down to my knot very carefully because it's probably going to go now do it very lightly or else it rubs the beeswax right off do it very carefully okay now what I'm going to do I'm going to do both a, okay see how there's a knot but that will go right through it because this is a huge hole so what I'm going to do to reinforce to make sure is I always do a stop bead I do it differently though. They'll tell you do a stop bead and then pull it off later. I don't exactly do it that way. Since I'm using crystal thread, I make it part of my design. You can't really tell it's a stop bead. But what you want to do is your first one, you want to go, I'm going to be going through it in the same direction. I know you can't see this. Go through it in the same direction and pull it through. 
And what I'm basically trying to do is make, a, it's called a stop bead. You pull the ends so that you have this. I'm going to do this a couple times so that the end is secure. This is not the way that they really teach you to do it, but this is the way I do it. They, this works for me. So I'm going to go through the same bead about three times to make sure it's secure because you don't want this unraveling. So that's the second time. Pull it tight. And I know you can't really see this is not the best way. I'm going through, and again, you can't really... I'm going through the same direction. So it's going around the bead, wrapping around the bead. So this is the third time. Again, pull real lightly because otherwise the beeswax coating on the thread just comes right it peels right off onto the thing. So there, three times. I'm going to pull it tight. So I have a bead that won't slip off the end. And I have a knot there that... Just leave that for now. Okay, so that's my first bead. We said we want 17 beads. That counts. I always count that as number one. If you do traditional stop bead, that's not... You'd use a different color bead and you don't do it as tightly and you it's not part of your design but I'm making this my number one bead so I'm going to do 16 more red beads and I do them I, sometimes I pick them up with my needle that's the right way most of the time I pick them up in my fingers so that's two three four and I'm just letting them fall as they will Five, six. I've never done a video so of this, so pardon me if you can't see. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Put that down to the end so you can see how it's going to look. There's 10 of them. Whoops, that's not 10 of them. Where'd they go? That's 10 of them. See, lined up there. Try and do this so you can see. 11. Yes, I do this. 12, 13, looking, <laughs> works for me, 14, 15, 16, and 17. No, kitty, she wants in, I'm, I'm sorry, no. All right, so that's the 17 of the red. Then next to the 17 red, we have the white. I'm going to do it through the thing so you can see how it's going to look, the white. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that's going to be 18. Let me count it on my grid and make sure I'm right. Eighteen. Eighteen whites. So I'm going to take my white beads and string on 18 white beads. I'm sorry if my cat is really, she's just going to have to go away. She was already in here once today. Two. Three. Four. Five. Put them right on the end there. No, six, seven, eight. I know this is really slow and tedious, but there's eight beads. You can see how they're coming. Oh, where did they go? <laughs> These don't want to slide down very easy.
You can see. It's gonna look like this. So, that's eight. And Eighteen. So, nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Okay, so we've got our bottom grid done. That's our first, that will be our first row. And we're going to go up from there. Since we've done our first row, Set this aside, take my pencil, and mark in the second. Since I finished the first row, that one's done. I always mark this as I'm going, so I know what row I'm working on. Not when I finished it, but when I'm working on it. So I know what row I'm on, if that makes any sense. All right, so there, there's the second row I've marked down. All I do is I take with my pencil, and I just mark so I see where I'm at. Second row. Now... Um, this is where you learn the square stitch technique and you probably want to refer to other places on the internet for this because this is this being the wrong kind of camera for this what you're gonna see is gonna be exactly backwards from the way it actually is I apologize for that um, I'll still try to talk you through it okay basically what you're going to be doing is just putting a bead right on top of this row. Just a row, it's square stitch, so it just means it's like a square. You're just doing a square on top of a square on top of a square, just beads on top of beads to form rows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be starting at the end where I left off, the white, here. And I'm going to be adding, and I'm you work in opposite ways. You go left, then right, then left, then right. So what I'm doing, and I know I can't, you can't see, I'm going to be going here, and I'm going to be working this way. So the first thing you want to do, and this might look a little awkward because starting is always the hardest part. You can, I'm going to be putting, I want whites on top of these whites. So what I, you always pick up the new bead first. You pick up the next bead. Now you can either put it, you can either bring it all the way down or you can just leave it. I usually just leave it on the needle and work with it. Whatever works for you. Sometimes this is awkward. It doesn't always work well. And I'm lefty, but I'm ambidextrous when it comes to this thing. But I always hold it in the left hand. So whatever works for you. Okay, now, when you're doing a square stitch, basically what you're doing is going through the, you go to the bead. Okay, I'm going to be putting this bead on top of, ah, I'm trying to, I'm going to be putting this bead on top of this bead at the very end. So what you want to do is go through, okay, I'm going to call this layer one, and this is going to be layer two. So you want to go through the bead on layer one. And you want to do it, how can I explain this? When you go through the bead on layer one, you want to go, okay, you want to go in the direction that you're like going towards, see the thread is coming out this way. You always want to go in facing... where the thread is coming out. When you go through the, the bottom layer, you always want to go away from where you're working. I'm working this way. And you're basically just like working in a, it's like a circle. It's like a box. So what you want to do is you want to go through 
where you want to add the bead. I want to add it above here. So I want to go, I'm going to put my needle in that bead towards where the thread is coming out. So my thread is coming out here, so I want to put it towards that. Now, you have to be really careful because there's a lot of thread and a lot of it, it can tangle. So, if you can see, I'm taking my needle with the new bead going through this one, and I'm going to pull it through. And I apologize if this doesn't work 100% because this is a really... Starting is really hard. That's all I can say. Okay. So when you start, okay, you're going to have that bead and it's going to be, oh, this is really hard to show you. See how it's just sort of on top there. What you want to do is you want to position it so that it's like it should be on top of the other one. Hold it in your fingers. Then you take the needle. Now you want to secure that bead you just added is on top. You want to secure that in place. That's the new, that's the row two that I just did. So what you do is you take your needle and you're putting it back through this new bead on the row two. And when you put it through that bead, you're going to be doing it the opposite direction. You're not going towards the thread coming out. You're doing it towards the other, the other side, where you're working. You're working this way, so you want to point it that way. So you take your needle and you put it through. And as you can see, it's going away from the direction it went from before. So you're just looping through. You're going in through the bottom one and coming out and securing the top one. It's just like you're doing a circle every time to secure the bead. So I'm going to pull that through. And hopefully it does what it's supposed to do. There you go. It secured it. So you have this bead sitting on top of that one. It's coming out and you're facing the right way. And you just keep doing that basic pattern, bead on top of bead. So I'm just going to do a couple more because I am running long here. So, okay, so we're going to go to the next white. So I'm going to pick up a white. I'm going to pick this one up with my needle. And again, I don't pull it all the way down. I just hold it there on my needle. Whatever works for you. Okay, now I'm going to be going through the next bead over. The, the next one over. And again, I'm going to be going through it. And you got to be very careful so you don't go through that other bead. You only want your needle to go through the one bead. I can't, if I show you this, I'll mess it up. Only going through the one bead towards this, this way. Pull it through. Sometimes these don't cooperate, so, and they'll want to lay the wrong way and want to do the wrong way, and it can be, and you want to keep the tension too. You got to kind of play with it a little bit to get it to look right. Okay, so I have that. I don't know if you can see, I've got. Uh, I realize it's very hard to see. Let me secure that bead. So then you go back through only that bead that you just added. Only that second bead. Don't go through two beads. Go through just that second bead that you just added. And again, you're going towards the red part. You're going towards, you're going away from the string side. And you pull it tight. There. And when you're done with your stitch, it should always be coming out of that bead you just added. So see, you've got four beads there. Let me put it against my thumb so you can see it. Uh, I apologize. This is not the best camera. Do one more. Pick up another white bead. And you just... Again, you go through. The bottom one's always the hardest. Once you get a couple of rows established, it goes really quick. People are, oh, it's so hard. 
Once you learn it, it goes quick because it's always the same. You're just building one on another. You just work down the row, then you start here and you work down that row. Okay, again, now we're on the third bead. You go through the third bead and you're going towards, you're going, uh, the way that I look at it is I'm going away from the area that I'm, the direction I'm working. And then I go towards the direction I'm working, but you, I can't say always right and left. You, you always go opposite to the direction you're working for the first part of the stitch. And that will pull the bead in place. And with this, with the start, you have to mess with it a little bit because it sometimes it takes a little bit. With the, these are 11 uh, seed beads, 11 slash zero Mayuki Delica beads, and they are very, very tiny and very painstaking. So, okay, I got that on there. Then I want to go through just the third bead and going the opposite direction. And my thread is trying to catch on stuff. Pull it tight. And kind of, you want to kind of tighten that up so that they all sit. And it should look like a square, like a little grid. If you can see that, it looks like a little grid. And I know you can't because <laughs> these are white and it's on a white, white background. So there you have it. That's the square stitch. And then what you're going to do is just keep doing the same thing for the whites, just going through, up and around, working your way down. Then when you go to the red, up and around. And then when you have number two done, you start number three and you just do it the same thing, but the opposite way. So that's the square stitch. That is how I get my tapestry started. So I'll be working on that today. Um, that is for a customer at the market. So I hope this turns out well. So I'm going to be working on that. And any questions you have, you may want to uh, just direct them to Amy's Handmade Gifts at gmail.com. And I'll do my best to answer. Again, I know this isn't professional grade or anything, but I just want to show you because I have people looking at it, how do you do this? <laughs> so that's the beginning of the square stitch. I'll show you another stitch. I did want to show you what I did. Um, I finished off another double St. Petersburg chain bracelet today. I'm calling this one Bell Bottom Blues, and it worked. I didn't get it, didn't twist. This one came out really well. The only thing is I had to change colors. I ran out of one color, so it's a slight variation. Otherwise, it would have been 20. I kept it at 15. So there's that. And then I don't know if I showed you. I finished my mini tapestry, and it came out pretty well for the most part. I'm not going to take it out of here because it's... It came out pretty well. Uh, it's $20. The only thing I didn't like, I used what beads I had. I had metallic beads. If I was going to do this from scratch, it would be non-metallic. It would be different. But I'm just, I just worked that one again with what I have. And again, you can either put this in a mini frame or it can be sewn on clothing or a purse or what have you. So that's, people, what do you use them for? That's what you use it for. So that's what I've got right now. Um, mold update. The mold is gone. The rains are gone. Hallelujah. And the roof is being fixed. And the closet is being repaired. And so that problem is under control and being fixed. So, Alright, let me go post this and answer the phone. Bye.